Well, let's talk about what's coming up. What's on the horizon for uh, for FreeBSD? Um, I know another big item that's gotten some news recently, the uh, Morello, the Cherry Morello project out of Cambridge and an arm. So somebody want to highlight that? Yeah, so I think this is a really interesting project um, that is not FreeBSD per se, but one in which FreeBSD plays a, a really big part. Um, so the, the Cherry project um, is an extension of uh, processor instruction set architectures, uh, ISAs, to support capabilities. Um, and there's just a lot to go into to kind of try and explain um, uh, the background there. Um, and I think the, the best, uh, we're not gonna be able to cover it in, in a few moments here, um, but uh, in effect, uh, capability is sort of an unforgeable, um, uh, you can think of it as um, a pointer uh, that's extended to be, um, to have additional information, i.e. Uh, uh, a length and, and bounded limit. Um, and it's an unforgeable um, token that allows access to the memory that it references. Um, there's, there's lots beyond that, um, but one of the keys is that it provides sort of guaranteed um, spatial safe, spatial memory safety. Um, so it's you know if you have a capability that references some piece of memory, there is no way to use that to access anything outside of the the memory that it, it references. Um, and so the the Cherry um, research project at the University of Cambridge started with um, a derivative of the MIPS ISA for, um, for their initial research and uh, has been extended to provide implementations for uh, ARM64 and RISC-V as well. But the Morello project is, is particularly interesting um, because this is work that ARM itself has done to actually fabricate a physical, um, uh, a physical CPU um, using uh, uh, Morello, which is the the um, experimental ARM64 implementation of, of Cherry capabilities. And so this is a 64-bit um, ARM CPU uh, with capability register extensions um, that can run uh, FreeBSD, uh, Cherry BSD, which is the um, which is the FreeBSD derivative that the, the Cherry folks have created um, that provides a, a fully capability enabled um, uh, kernel. And these, these systems are starting to ship um, uh, to researchers. Uh, the, the initial systems have shipped to, to Cambridge and, and additional systems are shipping to various researchers looking to use this, um, looking to, to continue their, their research on this, this platform. Um, what else uh, is coming up? What's, what's up with Beehive and ARM64? So this is uh, on our roadmap um, for foundation sponsored work that um, uh, Andy Turner can take on. Um, so Andy works for the foundation um, on a variety of ARM64 things. And one of the tasks that we have on the, the plan um, is to help support the efforts to integrate um, uh, the 64-bit ARM support that exists for Beehive. So there are patches that exist today um, to add 64-bit ARM Beehive support, um, but there's there's some work that needs to be done just to get them into an integratable state and resolve some outstanding issues. And so that's uh, one of the the next tasks that will um, will be on Andy's plate and uh, allow us to um, allow us to run Beehive um, on all of our tier one architectures. What other upcoming things do you want to discuss today? There's plenty <laughs> given the roadmap that you mentioned and such. Um, so I think one thing we can we can talk about or mention at least is that uh, Free, the FreeBSD Foundation's work on Wi-Fi uh, will continue. So in addition to finishing up the remaining steps um, on sort of just stabilizing and integrating the IWL Wi-Fi support for Intel um, uh, next, there's drivers for additional uh, additional devices and enabling 802.11 and an 802.11 AC um, and future Wi-Fi uh, standards within the FreeBSD Wi-Fi stack. Um, so that's uh, that's work that's that's in progress and on the foundation's um, uh, roadmap already. And we've also been talking to Moritz Systems to continue their work on LDB 
Uh, it's in the early stages and nothing's finalized yet, but some of the uh, possible improvements or further improvements to LLTB would be multi-process support. Uh, we discussed a few more uh, usability improvements. Um, perhaps some lower priorities that were discussed were support for risk five or tracing syscalls similar to S-Trace or Trust. Uh, well, that's a lot <laughs> just going around. Uh, are there more things that uh, you want to mention uh, before we wrap up? I think I think one thing we should try and talk about here a little bit is just um, the kind of renewed interest in FreeBSD as a desktop. Um, uh, I think that is something that um, uh, historically FreeBSD was uh, sort of very well known as a server operating system, um, and people have been running FreeBSD on a desktop uh, for for quite some time. But it's it's kind of um, uh, grown and waned in popularity over over time. And I think um, a few years ago, there was very much perception that uh, FreeBSD developers don't use FreeBSD on their own laptops. You know, th there was comments at um, uh, conferences and such that the FreeBSD developers were all using Macs and such. Um, and I don't think that was ever fully true, um, but certainly uh, it's cer certainly there's been a, um, a strong growth in the number of developers who use FreeBSD as their day-to-day day-to-day um, desktop environment, their daily driver. Um, so I've been using FreeBSD as my desktop for for years and years. Um, I think everyone on this this call, um, uh, Mark and and Joe, uses uh, FreeBSD as their their primary uh, desktop environment. Um, and I think that there's been an interest in in sort of FreeBSD um, as a desktop that's um, that's always been there, but has grown in the community um, uh, again over time. And we see this also with um, with proje uh, projects like GhostBSD or Hello System um, that try to build desktop environments. Um, the closest thing I guess we would have to a distro in the FreeBSD world um, uh, that build on FreeBSD and try to package uh, FreeBSD as a ready to use um, pleasant desktop environment. Yeah, we've been getting quite a lot of development effort in kind of desktop oriented uh, you know, device drivers. So, I mean, there's a huge amount of work that goes into maintaining ports of the DRM graphics drivers from Linux. And those work very well on contemporary hardware, like on, you know, um, my, my framework laptop, which runs FreeBSD, uses, uh, has, has a, uh, Tiger Lake, or is it Tiger Lake? I can't quite remember the name anymore. Um, one of Intel's silly names. One of the lakes. Um, one of the lakes. Tiger Lake, yes. Uh, so that, that works flawlessly on, on at least uh, the development branch. I haven't had any graphics problems. Um, similarly, uh, a number of my AMD GPUs, uh, fairly recent ones, uh, all, all work properly with FreeBSD. Um, uh, Vladimir Konaturev has been working on um, uh, touchpad drivers, and in particular, um, uh, HID devices that use uh, I squared C as a transport, um, which has been uh, pretty common among laptops uh, for the past few years. So, um, having having first class support for that has been uh, has been great for anyone looking to run FreeBSD on a modern laptop. And I'll mention that it's nice that the DRM work for for. Uh, modern graphics support hasn't sacrificed support for some fairly old devices. I'm running, I think it's, we have two laptops here running FreeBSD. I think one's Ivy Bridge and one's Sandy Bridge. And the, the DRM uh, FreeBSD ports work fine. They're just, just install them and go. 